Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 15 of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to continue talking about my SQL, and more specifically, what I mean by normalization of databases, which is just how to properly structure your databases so that your tables are standard compliant, meaning that other people that are going to look at them are going to be able to understand them and also easily searchable. Okay, so just as a review from last time, I'm going to show you how to log in to my SQL, however, you might just type mysql minus the five on your system and then enter your password so we're into mysql now if i want to show my databases i just do that and you can see all the databases that i have here if i want to use the customer database just type use customer database changed if i want to make sure that i have the database that I want to use, I just type in select database followed by parentheses, and it shows me that I'm using the customer database. And if I clear all the scroll back, what I'm gonna do now is explain to you the first rule of normalization, and that is two-tiered. First, each column must contain one value, and also you cannot have tables that have repeating columns. Now to explain this, I'm actually gonna create a bad table, and as I go through, I'm gonna explain where I messed up in regards to the first rule of normalization or structuring of your database. Okay, so I'm gonna create a table called customer, and if you didn't see the previous tutorial to this, most definitely you should watch that. All right, so I'm gonna create a name field, and this is gonna break the first rule of normalization because each column must contain one value only. The way I have this structured, I'd actually have to type out the entire name. See, first name, last name. I have two values inside of one box. That is not allowed inside of normalization. But I'm going to continue on explaining how you don't do things, and then I'm going to show you how to correctly do everything. And by the way, you create comments inside of PHP like this with the hash mark. And if it's a multi-line comment, forward slash star, and then this would be multi-line, and then close that off. I know this doesn't go over multiple lines, but just so you know how to create multi-line comments inside of MySQL. And then I'm gonna create a address field. And this is one sign that you're not following normalization rules. If you are creating a variable number of characters that is extremely long, there it is one sure sign that you're not following that rule. So for example, this would be a full address with city, state, and zip code. Again, you would not want to do that, but I'm going to continue on. This rule actually breaks the second rule within the first rule of normalization in that I'm creating multiple tables that have repeating columns, meaning that more than likely there's going to be multiple phone numbers. And here I am going to just continue to add additional columns for each potential telephone number. This is not allowed. What you need to do instead is to create another table that just contains telephone numbers. Okay, so there is how that rule is broken. And I'm also, if you're creating a bad table, I'm going to show you how to get out of it. Just hit backslash C, and that will cancel out of your table inside of MySQL. Now I'm going to show you how to make a more proper table. You're going to want to click in Create Table, Customer, again. And in upcoming tutorials, I'm going to create perfect tables for you. And through examples, you're going to really get this stuff. So just pick up, just like before, everything that you can pick up from each tutorial, and then we'll move on from that point. So see, I'm splitting the first and last name into their own little boxes, just like that. So that's proper. In here, I'm going to create street, 40 characters, right there. That's perfectly fine. Here, I'm going to create city. And this, actually, there are three normalization rules. The first one has the rule of each column must contain one value, and you cannot have repeating columns. The second normalization rule only has one rule. You can't allow repeating values. What I mean by that is, in my circumstance, if this was a customer database, I would have lots of people living in Pittsburgh. By that rule, that means I'm going to have repeating values inside of this box. That means that I should split out city and put it also into its own table, okay? And as well, I should do the same thing with state because I'm more than likely going to have the same state repeated over and over and over again. Technically, I should have zip code in its own table as well, but that totally depends upon you. And as a review from the last tutorial, a small int can contain a maximum number of 65,535. So in my circumstance, that's going to cover all of my potential zip codes. For you, it might not. Or you might live in another country and you don't even know what a zip code is. 
Then what I'm doing here is I'm breaking out phone into its own table. So what I'm gonna do here, this is what we call a foreign key and it's unsigned and it's not null, meaning I'm requiring it. And this guy can contain a maximum of 255 digits. So I'm guessing nobody's gonna have more than 255 telephone numbers. So this is what we call a foreign key, meaning that it's going to relate to another table in MySQL. And then I'm also gonna do the same thing by creating an, a foreign key in relation to orders that get placed through here. And I'm going to guess that I'm going to get less than 65,000 orders from any one person. You always, whenever you're creating your tables, however, want to err on the side of caution. And then I'm going to create the master primary key for any of my customers, as I reviewed in previous tutorial. So this is like the social security number for my, any of my customers that I create. And then I want to notify MySQL what my primary key is. And I do that with this line of code right here. And I close off everything. Now I said there are three rules of normalization. I actually broke the third rule in actually having street, city, state, and zip code inside of this table. The first rule is always followed, meaning that again, each column must contain one value and you can't have repeating columns. That's always followed whenever you're creating databases. The second rule of normalization, meaning you can't have repeating values, is followed if it makes sense. So I would follow that and create an, a separate city and state table, but I might not create a separate zip code table. And the third rule of normalization states that you cannot have anything in a table that doesn't directly relate to the primary key being customer ID. So to explain that further, street does directly relate to the customer, meaning that the street where they live at or their business is is very personal to them. However, city is not. So that really does tell me, you know what, city should be in its own table, as well as state and as well as zip code, because state relates to city more than state relates to the customer ID, meaning there's gonna be a lot of people who are potential customers who live in this state as well as this city. So the third normalization rule says, you know what, these should all be put into their own tables. If you don't quite get it, leave a comment below. I'll go into more, but in future tutorials, I'm going to really, really explain this. So let's create our table. All right, so we created that. But remember, I have my phone up here, so I have to create a table specific to phone numbers. So I'm gonna do that. Here's my phone table. It's gonna be identification number for each telephone number that they give to me. Okay. And that's how we create all of our identification numbers or our primary keys. And this is the phone number itself, being work, home, what have you, fax. And here we're going to specifically say what type of phone number it is, meaning that they can't give us a telephone number without describing what it is. And then primary key, telling MySQL that yes, phone ID is the primary key for this table. And we created that. And now I'm going to create the orders table. Because remember, I broke that out into its own table. This is going to contain the name of all the products. And this technically should be broken out into its own little table. And I'm going to make a perfect orders table here for you in the future. This is the quantity that they're going to want, the price for each product they order, the date they ordered the product, and the identification number for each order that they put through. And notify that this is indeed the primary key for this new table. All right, show tables. And you can see now we have a customer, an orders, and a phone number table inside of the customer database. And if I want to describe or show more information for my orders table, you can see that it puts all that information here in front of me. But technically, you should not structure your table this way for your products. Technically, what your order table should look like, and I would get into it in this tutorial, however, I don't have enough time to fit it all in here. You should have your order, so you should have like orders table should look like this, and then you should have your order identification number, quantity underneath that, date of the order, and then you should have a part ID number. So this would be the orders table, order ID, quantity, date, part ID. Of course, I want to cancel out of that. And then you would have a, and this is a perfect way to structure orders tables, by the way. You would have part identification number, model number, manufacturer's ID. So let's say I sell computers. This would be like IBM. Product type, let's say that I also sell power plugs with the computers. Okay, so that would be a identification number specific to power plugs. The price for that individual thing, and then you would have a description 
for each individual product. And then you see here's the part ID. This is the primary key for this new table and it would be interlinked with the orders table right here. So here it would be a foreign key. And then you would go on and create a manufacturer and a product table as well. In the next tutorial, I'll actually create these tables for you. You can see them on screen. I'll explain everything. And then we'll go into actually putting information into these new tables and pulling information out of them. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, till next time.